Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am broadcasting to you live from Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great weekend so far. Today, IELTS speaking section, the interview, we will be focusing on part three. These materials for lots of practice exams, sample interview videos with different band scores. Visit us on our websites. Try our premium package, aehelp.com, for the academic version of the test. And g-i-e-l-t-s help.com, that's general IELTS help.com for the general version of the exam. Here is our hero cracking that IELTS acronym to signify success of students. Hi, Begzod. Hi, Preeti. Good to see you in this class as well. Hi, Haung. Good for you. We will be continuing uh, with part three from our previous class. Hi, Kala. Hi, Ahmed. Hi, Nilesh. Good to see so many students in on time. If you have questions, Send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. You can also contact me through the websites. This is the academic website. Once you have an account, you can log in at the top. And of course, one function of the website is at the top here. We have forums, blogs, and we have a contact us button. So you can contact us directly through the website. And same with the general version here as well. Just click that red button, join, and you can get a get in touch with us. All right. Uh, if you're looking to get our books, our exam books, um, you can buy them from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. This is our last class for this week. Next week, we will be continuing on Wednesday. Uh, same time at uh, 15 o'clock Central European time, okay? Uh, Lipsa, you're asking if you join, uh, can we review your essays? Yeah, we can give you a band score estimate. We also have um, editing uh, and writing services on our website that you can use. All right, students, so in your exam, uh, you have the speaking interview. The speaking interview is separate from the reading, listening, and the writing. The reading, listening, writing, it's the sit-down part of the test. It takes about three hours. And then you have your speaking interview that's face-to-face -face with an examiner. It takes about 15 minutes. It's fast. It's furious. Be ready for it. You'll do great. Okay? All right. So what is the speaking? It has three parts. Part number one, some questions on a general topic, your hobbies. Let's talk about colors. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about the weather. Okay, so just some general questions. And then you have part two. If you saw our last class uh, 30 minutes ago, uh, you know that part two is a card. It has some questions that you have to read, think about, then talk about for two minutes. After you're done part two, you have part three. The examiner will stop you in your little speech and they will say, okay, your time is up. That is the end of part two. Please give back the card with the questions. Please give back the pencil, the note paper. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I'm going to ask you more questions related to the topic of part two. So part three in the speaking is connected to part two. Okay, now this is a speaking class, so let's practice together. Make sure you repeat after me. Copy my intonation, copy my pronunciation, all of that fun stuff, okay? Uh, Juan, just uh, send me an email um, and I'll help you out if you're having trouble joining uh, any part of our uh, live broadcasts or our uh, websites. All right, so 
Um, part three, it's a little bit unique. Um, you have questions with follow-up questions, okay? So questions that dig for more details. So in part two, um, we were talking about the home, okay? We talked about the perfect house, the perfect home. And now we will continue talking about that in part three. So let's talk about the home. Let's get going. What are the most important points to consider when buying a new home? Give me some answers, students. Let's see what comes to mind for you right away when you have this question. What are the most important points to consider when buying a new home? Okay, Thoa uh, Bui says location, but Thoa, uh, that's a great answer, first of all. Uh, Haung, same thing, location, great answer. Immediately, uh, Haung, Thoa, think about full sentence answers. Students, we want to think about full sentence answers. Okay, that would be the full sentence. Muslima says affordability. Okay, uh, Hadi, Ipek, it's called the floor plan, not the house's plan, uh, floor plan, floor plan, F L O O R, floor plan. Okay, uh, Blandina, Jerry, okay, again, full sentences. So Bagzad says the location and the size of the house are two main points which need to be considered before purchasing it. Bagzad, really nice use of the passive voice. I like it. Okay. Uh, repeat after me, students. Nice and loud. Repeat. Okay. Nice and loud. What are the most important points to consider when buying a new home? One critical aspect to consider when purchasing a new home is its location, okay? Its location. Um, and then here, maybe give a little bit more, okay? So always think about the why. So why? Why is it important to think about the home's location, okay? So why? Always answer that why question, okay? Uh, for Dobbs, um, don't respond with... Um, uh, kind of like a, an extension of the question. So Ferdov says there are many needful ways to evaluate when pl uh, when planning to purchase a new home. Yeah, I know I'm asking you that, Ferdov. So just answer it for me. Okay, answer it for me. Amrit says the vital frac factors to uh, take care of are location, appearance, and... Whether or not it's a modern house, it should be in the suburbs of the city and be built from strong materials. Um, Amrit, that's a good start. Uh, why? So let's jump back to my question. Why? Why is the location important? If I can buy an amazing home, but hey, it's just somewhere... Why does that, why could that be a problem? Hadi says accessibility. Again, full sentences, students, one word answers, not get you a very good band score, okay? Amrit says it should be away from an industrial region. Uh, Amrit, instead of saying what it should be away from, uh, try to say what it should be close to. Always take a positive argument, students. So it should be close to schools, and to the workplace so that commutes are short, okay? All right. Um, Begzod says this not only enables easy access to markets like shopping malls, uh, but also provides a, but also near great transportation system. Great. So now we have some reasons, right? So again, Repeat, one critical aspect to consider when purchasing a new home is its location. I mean, it should be conveniently 
situated near schools and workplace, as well as shopping and some greenery. Also, the materials that the home is made of should be high quality so the house is durable and does not require repairs or frequent repairs okay now, here is my full answer. So one more time, one critical aspect to consider when purchasing a new home is its location. I mean, it should be conveniently situated near schools and workplace, as well as shopping and some greenery. Also, the materials that the home is made of should be high quality, so the house is durable and does not require frequent repairs. Students, if you're finding some new words like durable, okay, durable means that it doesn't break down easily. You can do. Thank you for joining and becoming a member. Make sure to send me an email so I can uh, hook you up with our six full exams. And uh, you can also make requests for classes. Welcome aboard. Thank you for joining. Thanks for showing your support. By the way, some students, if you uh, want to show your support, you don't want to be a member, you don't want to purchase our course, you can also make donations through Super Chat. It does help us help you, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, um, so here we go. Uh, we have the answer, we have the explanation, there's good complex grammar structure, and I have at least two points, right? Because the question says, what are important points? Always pay attention to plurals. So if it's important points, make sure that you say at least two. Okay, you don't need to say five or ten, but say two. Okay, thank you, Yuquan. Again, I can see you in there now with our little uh, green uh, hero head. It's perfect. All right, and then comes the follow-up question. Why are these important? What should you do? So here's this follow-up question why are these important and at this in this moment you might be going didn't I just tell you why it's important mm, maybe not okay for Dobbs very good so for Dobbs right away well it's it reduces the cost of transportation uh, to and from work uh, for Dobbs what do we call that when people travel regularly to work and back home or to school and back home it reduces the cost. Also for Dobbs, it reduces the time, right? What do we call it, Amrit? Thank you for helping out for Dobbs. It's called your commute. Yeah. So you can say, well, these are important because a convenient location can reduce the cost and time of the daily commute to and from work or school and having a well-built home also saves money in the long run, whereby people don't need to pay for expensive. How can we say repairs in another way? What's another way to say uh, repair instead of repeating the word repair when you repair something on the home, like your roof or a wall or a fence? Um, how can you say that? What's another way to say that? Okay. 
Hi, Kiran. Commute. Good. All right. Amrit says, renovations are renovating. Very good, Maxime. Nazarchuk. Very good. Expensive renovations. Absolutely. So always look for that paraphrasing. Uh, love pre construction would be a good work is a good word as well. Um, the word I was looking for is renovate or renovation. Absolutely. Uh, refurbish haung is a little bit different. Okay, refurbish is used uh, when we kind of. Um, renew a vintage item so it uh, wouldn't be the best in this context renovate is better uh, remodel is different as well maxime remodel means to build it in a different way like you want a different kitchen so you remodel your kitchen uh, for it to be bigger maybe include an island more counter space that's remodeling maxime so renovating is the better word okay all right fantastic so again um, here is the follow-up question and answer. Why are these important? Repeat after me. Well, these are important because a convenient location can reduce the cost and time of the daily commute to and from work or school. And having a well-built home also saves money in the long run, whereby people don't need to pay for expensive renovations. Great. Okay. Now, again, I start slow with my speech and then I speed up. So try to repeat me as best as you can. If it helps to read, that's okay. Eventually, try to repeat me just from hearing me, okay, without actually reading uh, the um, projection behind me. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. So the examiner now asks you, uh, what factors determine the cost of a house or an apartment? Okay. EM Nepal, that's because it's laggy because it's live. And you are watching this amazing stream from Europe in real time. So, um, what... Factors, again plural, pay attention, determine the cost of a house or apartment. Um, so for Dov says the materials that the home is made of. Okay, that's a good idea. Preeti says two elements that are quite essential for the cost of the home are materials and the labor. Maxime says the amenities. Again, uh, full sentences. Nima says it's area. The location, right? Uh, Kavita says location and amenities. So interestingly, students, uh, we're using the same idea here as we did before. Notice that many of you are saying location and materials. So how should I start this response? If I want to get a higher band score, how should I start this answer? Okay, so type it into the chat the same way as you would in your speaking. What would be a good way for me to start this response? Hi, Paula. You're actually in your IELTS exam as we speak, and you're joining this class. Fantastic. Good for you. All right, and it's good to... Come in here, make sure you're repeating Paula nice and loud for these, okay? And good luck on your speaking exam coming up. I hope it will go well. Ah, Preeti, uh, very good. Yeah, absolutely. So make a connection uh, to the uh, previous uh, statement, yeah. So just as I mentioned, previously about the importance of location and materials, these two factors also greatly affect the cost of the house. Now, what should I say after that? Fantastic. So, 
making that connection, okay? Connecting among my answers. Just as I mentioned previously about the importance of location and materials, these two factors also greatly affect the cost of the house. Yeah, Begzod says, well, maybe throw in an example here to make that clearer, a further explanation. Yeah, absolutely. So you can say, what I mean is that a house located in upstate New York will cost 10 times as much as the same home located in the Bronx. Okay, in fact, it's probably like 100 times more, but you need to back it up. Okay, now for those of you who uh, watched the class an hour ago, you remember that we talked about uh, our dream house in upstate New York, right? So what I mean is that a house located in upstate New York will cost 10 times as much as the same home located in the Bronx. In addition, a house built mostly of wood would be half the cost of the same home were it built from steel and concrete. Okay? So there you go. That would be a good explanation, example style finish to make that very, very clear. It looks like lots, but it's not. I'm using 16 size font in speech. This is quite quick. Uh, repeat after me, students. Repeat after me. What factors determine the cost of a house or apartment? Repeat, just as I mentioned previously about the importance of locations and materials, these two factors also greatly affect the cost of the house. What I mean is that a house located in upstate New York will cost 10 times as much as the same home located in the Bronx. In addition, a house built mostly of wood would be half the cost of the same home were it built from steel and concrete. Amrit's asking me about the grammar of were it. Uh, Amrit, this is unreal conditional. So uh, if I were a doctor, I would. If it were a house made of concrete, it would be. So here, it's a condition, conditional. Were it built of steel and concrete? If it were built of steel and concrete, it would be expensive. Okay? Got it? Awesome. Okay. Good. Now, follow-up question. Uh, which one has the most impact? Which one has the most impact? So in this case, the examiner is basically asking you, is it location or is it the materials? Okay. Uh, location, location by Paula and Nabia. Uh, yeah, I would probably agree that location affects the cost of a home more than any other factor. Ladies and gents, full sentence answers, okay? Full sentence answers. Please, Paula, make sure you're speaking in full sentences to your examiner. Use the question, okay? Paraphrase. Uh, Begzod says, hmm, well, the former has the most influence on the cost of the residence is not only because it provides good services, but also uh, allows people to save um, hours of time uh, living in a convenient location. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I really like Begzod, how you use the word former. So using former and latter. Former meaning location, latter meaning the materials. Oh, I definitely think that the former has a much greater determining factor 
than materials. Some neighborhoods are extremely expensive just because of location. I mean, even a small one-bedroom bungalow in the Hamptons would cost like two million dollars. Okay, so again, joining to that part two that we had before and remembering to use quantitative information, focusing on answer, explain, example, answer, explain, example. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, uh, repeat after me. Let's go back to the beginning. What factors determine the cost of a house or apartment? Just as I mentioned previously about the importance of locations and materials, these two factors also greatly affect the cost of the house. What I mean is that a house located in upstate New York will cost 10 times as much as the same home located in the Bronx. In addition, a house built mostly of wood would be half the cost of the same home were it built from steel and concrete. Which one has the most impact? Oh, I definitely think that the former has a much greater determining factor than materials. Some neighborhoods are extremely expensive just because of location. I mean, even a small one-bedroom bungalow in the Hamptons would cost like $2 million. Okay. All right. Doing really well, students. Some really nice answers coming up. Again, full sentences, everyone. Full sentences, okay? Here we go. How have people's house preferences changed compared to one generation before? So how have people's house preferences changed compared to one generation before. Think about it. If you need time, buy time. Say something like, hmm, that's an interesting question. Please allow me a moment to come up with a good answer. Okay. Uh, for Doves, while everybody's thinking, I'll read some previous comments. For Doves says, location is more important than materials because many people care only to save money uh, for short-term transportation. Uh, and not waste time. For Dobbs, you got a couple of awkward word usage mistakes there, also some grammar, grammatical mistakes, so careful with that. Uh, Pachu says, location is the most impactful for choosing a home to buy because people always uh, prefer safe and beautiful neighborhoods, such as along the beach, okay? Uh, Mehmet says, um, it changes between generations because of tech and social media. When we couldn't know any information about new styles, nowadays we are all up to date when it comes to fashion. Mehmet, I kind of get what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Trung Yi Nguyen is asking, will this video be available after the live stream? Absolutely, Trang. It will be on the channel. It takes about one hour for YouTube to process, and then it's on our channel for about two weeks. Okay, so you can review it. Okay, so Preeti says, people prefer to live in a flat rather than in a house. Okay. Um, cool one says, ah, that's a tricky question. Uh, I think individuals mostly prefer to live in small homes now, uh, as where a generation ago, people really wanted to have a big house. Uh, yeah, cool one. I agree. So people these days, uh, don't necessarily desire as much space in their homes as they did a generation before. Now, students, it doesn't have to be the truth, okay? The examiner is not going to disagree with you. So the examiner will not say, oh, that's not true. Uh, I don't think you're right. Um, as long as it's believable or arguable, you can say whatever you think, okay? 
So if you think people prefer smaller homes today than before, say it. If you think people uh, prefer to live in apartments instead of houses today, say it. It's arguable. It doesn't matter. If you say people prefer to live in the city uh, or homes located in the city, as we're past, it was the countryside, say it. Okay, They're not going to disagree with you. They're not going to say, I, I don't think you're right, actually. I, in fact, I think people like to live in bigger homes today. Uh, so you're not there to argue. You're not there to debate. It just has to be believable all right so you can say hmm that's an interesting question allow me a moment to think about it the examiner might say sure or nod their head and you can say well i suppose that one difference I have observed over the years is people's desire to live in smaller homes than during my parents' time. Okay. So here we go. Uh, repeat after me. Original question. How have people's house preferences changed compared to one generation before? Very importantly, students, very, very importantly, this is a present perfect. How have people's preferences changed? One really safe way to show that grammar is what Paula just wrote up. I'm glad you just did that, Paula. Very good. Um, which is answer it. Well, it has changed a lot. Right away, just use it. Well, it has changed a lot. Today, people live more in flats than in houses. For example, my new building is mostly a large flat full of young people, and traditional homes are in the countryside with our parents living in them. Okay, so good, Paula. Right away, show that present perfect. Okay. Um, Begzad says, there has been a considerable change in choosing a house compared to 30 years ago. Careful, Begzad. Previous century. Yeah, I guess we're at the beginning of the new millennium. It's a bit awkward. As a result of tax and technology, in the past, people often lived in big houses and paid less, while these days... Uh, both modern tools, both with modern tools, people live in much smaller houses and pay a lot more money. Okay, Bagzod, that's great. So you're already answering the follow-up question, which is, why is this? Okay, so here's my answer again. Hmm, that's an interesting question. Allow me a moment to think about it. Well, I suppose that one difference I have observed over the years is people's desire to live in smaller homes than during my parents' time. Why is this? Why do people want to live in smaller homes? Okay. I'm not sure if it's a force of necessity. Simply because people uh, don't have as much money for large homes these days, or because of modern habits. I mean, these days, or nowadays, to avoid repetition, people don't want to clean as much and prefer to spend time out of their home as opposed to entertaining guests at their residence. Okay, 
So there is my answer. Um, so why is this? Repeat after me. Again, use natural language. Take note of these expressions. Learn them. Use them. I'm not sure if it's a force of necessity simply because people don't have as much money for large homes these days or because of modern habits. I mean, nowadays, people don't want to clean as much and prefer to spend time out of their home as opposed to entertaining guests at their residence. So they no longer need a large living room or a games room, but instead go to a restaurant. Okay. All right. Um, Paula says, right, it could be because the demand of properties has changed and today more and more people want to live in city centers. So there's no space for large houses. Paula, remember the large houses, right? Small apartments, large houses, but sure. However you answer. Okay. All right. Doing really well. And one way to know that you're doing a good job and uh, the uh, speaking interview is going nice and smooth. Two ways to know that. Number one, if the examiner is not interrupting you. So if the examiner is not constantly cutting you off, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. okay, next question. And why is this? And can we go to the next one? So if they're not constantly interrupting you, it means that you're probably doing a really good job. You're answering the questions clearly. You're staying on topic. You're keeping your responses the right length. You're answering explaining example, you're uh, creating a coherent, natural conversation. The other way to know that you're on the right track, the other way to know that you're really doing a good job is uh, the examiner will have time to get into another set of questions, okay? Now, it's no guarantee, so don't, you know, don't panic if you don't hear this. Don't be like, oh, I must have done horribly. They never asked me any different questions. Uh, that's not true. Maybe they have enough questions in the previous uh, uh, part or the previous uh, uh, part three, so they're not going to. But if they do, that definitely means that you're on the right track, okay? So the examiner might say, okay, let's talk more about uh, modern buildings. Let's talk more about modern buildings, okay? And then the examiner will continue with the next question. What kinds of materials are popular to use in the construction of new buildings these days? Okay, so give me a good answer. And students who are in this class from the beginning, hint, hint, you should be joining some of your previous answers to this one. Okay, so Tao Bui, I know you're in this class from the beginning. So you should use an expression to join the words steel and concrete, of course, to this response. Don't forget, any time you have a chance to link up your answers, you're increasing your band score, you're showing more coherence, you're showing more cohesion, you're showing better communication. Okay, I want to see that for Dobbs. I'm pretty sure you were in the class for that answer as well. So try it again. Okay. Lovepreet says, nowadays there are many types of materials used for building houses. For example, cement, stone, and steel um, for keeping the natural, uh, for safeguarding the building from a natural disaster such as earthquakes. Uh, Love Preet saying it's called a natural disaster, not natural crisis. That's awkward. Okay. All right. Uh, Sukhpreet uh, Grawal, the first one that I see um, doing this. So you're saying, as I said, uh, houses are often built of wood. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's cheap material. Sukhpreet, that was good. Too bad you took that back. I loved it. You started it correctly. Okay. Begzad says, both concrete and steel are the most used items in building houses as they are not only long lasting, but they can also safeguard residents from natural disasters. Um, Begzad, careful. If you're over informing, it's easy to run into mistakes with grammar and word choice. Okay. 
careful. Um, all right. Um, so this is the first question. This is the follow-up question. It's okay if you're giving reasons and you're jumping the follow-up question. Just make sure that you don't make mistakes. Okay. So Juan Pablo Avila says, nowadays the construction materials are various depending on the uh, location and the available materials. In the United States, wood is often used to build homes and steel and concrete is used to build apartment buildings, right? Okay, sure. Again, link these up. Well, as I had indicated uh, previously, Cheaper homes are often made of wood, especially in North America. And more expensive homes or houses, as well as apartment buildings, are constructed using steel and concrete. Okay. So, repeat after me. Lanthew, very good. As I told you before, Paula, very good. Lanthew, as I have mentioned before, very good. So there's some nice connections there. Perfectly. Uh, stated or perfectly started. Here we go. So what kinds of materials are popular to use in the construction of new buildings these days? Uh, repeat after me. Well, as I had indicated previously, cheaper homes are often made of wood, especially in North America, and more expensive houses as well as apartment buildings are constructed using steel and concrete. What are the reasons for this? What are the reasons for this? Many of you have answered. There are a couple of important reasons to use these building supplies. One is safety. And the other is affordability, especially along the western coast of North America. Earthquakes are a real threat and wooden houses are able to bend instead of collapse in case of such a natural disaster. Okay. Conversely, steel and concrete buildings are quite resilient to fire damage or to fire. All right, so again, I am giving you new words. I'm giving you new vocabulary, new sentence structures. Uh, make sure to practice these, okay? I'm using the information that you gave me, just putting it a little bit differently, all right? So repeat your response or repeat my response, there are a couple of important reasons to use these building supplies. One is safety and the other is affordability. Uh, especially along the western coast of North America, earthquakes are a real threat. And wooden houses are able to bend instead of collapse in case of such a natural disaster. Conversely, steel and concrete buildings are quite resilient to fire. Okay? Begzad says, well, as I had just said, because of their strength, most residences are built with using such materials. Like in Japan, hundreds of people who lived in wooden houses died of earthquakes. 
Um, yeah, it's also the construction technology, right? Wooden houses do bend better, Begzod, uh, and they do resist earthquakes if they're built properly. All right, um, but again, the examiner will not argue with you. Begzod, if you tell me that wooden houses are not good in an earthquake, that's fine. Resilient, Tina, the word resilient means they can withstand. So they're not completely 100% proof. It means that they're not perfect, but they do provide resistance to the danger. All right, let's go to the next question. Here we go. How has technology been used in modern construction to make buildings more comfortable and safer for residents? Notice how this is a present perfect passive voice. How has technology been used in modern construction to make buildings more comfortable and safer for residents? Okay, give me a good answer for that. Okay, Brown Jesus, you'll have to adjust to our teaching time as we are broadcasting for the world, not just for India, although we do have a lot of viewers there. All right, so again, present perfect passive. How has technology been used in modern construction to make the buildings more comfortable and safer for residents? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Again, if you need time to think, don't be shy. Use a, a leading expression. Say, hmm, it's an uncommon question. Please give me a second. And then you can come up with it. Okay, so think about technology. Yuki Anlu. Uh, protect from disasters such as earthquakes. It's not really protect, it's resist or be resilient in disasters such as earthquakes. Or they offer earthquake, uh, pro or they offer protection from earthquakes. Okay? For Dove says, buildings are safer and more comfy uh, than two decades before because nowadays uh, construction uses technologies and materials to build modern buildings. But for Dove's, what is that? You need to be a little bit more specific with your answer for Dove's. That will help you to increase your band scores. Okay. Uh, Farhan says, 3D graphics have enabled modern designers to develop customized options for fulfilling the needs of residents like smart beds, curvy tables, and moving cabinets. Uh, Farhan, sure, great. Okay, that's a good answer. I think it's a little bit more advanced and complex than you need, but it works, okay? Um, again, visualization students. So picture a modern home or a modern building and think about what you will find in that building, okay? Uh, advancements in technology have made the conditions of modern houses much more convenient and safe, like solar panels and cameras. Okay, begs odds, solar panels, cameras, security system. Sure, that's good, okay? So you're on the right track. Now, students, you don't need to repeat the question, okay? Just give me the answer. So you don't have to say it's made it more safe and more comfortable. So um, modern features. Like closed circuit camera systems. And advanced fire alarms. Have greatly improved the safety of newly built homes. In addition, fast elevators 
and large windows have increased the comfort of apartment buildings. Okay? So again, visualize, think about it, don't overcomplicate. So if you think of new homes, what do you have in there that you don't have in old buildings? Um, you have fire alarm systems, you have fast elevators, you have cameras, okay? So you have big windows, big bright windows that you might not have had 50, 60 years ago in the same construction. All right, just repeat after me. How has technology been used in modern construction to make the buildings more comfortable and safer for residents? Hmm, that's an uncommon question. Please give me a second. Modern features like closed circuit camera systems and advanced fire alarms have greatly improved the safety of newly built homes. In addition, fast elevators and large windows have increased the comfort of apartment buildings or even better, apartment living. Okay. And the last question, students, the last question. What else may be used in the future? So what else might be used in the future to make homes even safer and more comfortable? Okay. Uh, Farhan, yes, have greatly improved. That's the present perfect. So that's where I'm making sure that I'm, um, uh, that I'm showing the grammar of the question. Remember that the question, Farhan, also has present perfect, has technology. Now, we released a new high-definition video on our channel that was sponsored by Skillshare where we talk about present perfect grammar. And I explain that present perfect is used in English for five reasons. To show change over time, repetition over time, experience, achievement, and expectation. In this case, I'm using present perfect mostly to show achievement, have greatly improved the safety of newly built homes. It's an achievement of modern building and construction. Hope that makes sense, Farhan. I went into a little bit of extra definition there with that. Okay. Lovepreet says, in the upcoming years, the demand of machines can be increased because it is easier to run, which people would like to use, so it can reduce the amount of labor. Okay, not sure where you're going with that, uh, Lovepreet, but you're on the right track. Um, for this kind of question, okay, you can basically state anything you want, okay? There's no way that we can argue with your predictions about the future. And I'm sure a lot of you will come up with smart homes. Well, I believe that in future construction, smart homes will be the common standard whereby residents can control windows, lights, home theater, and other parts of their house simply through voice command or their smartphones. Okay, so repeat after me. Here we go. What else may be used in the future? Used in the future, please use the future participle will in your answer. We're looking for that. Well, I believe that in the future construction, in future construction, smart homes will be the common standard whereby residents can control windows, lights, home theater, and other parts of their house simply through voice command or their smartphones. Lights, turn on. Lights, turn off. Home theater, turn to channel 35. 
Computer, tune in to Academic English Help YouTube channel for some IELTS lessons. That's it for me for today, students, for this week. Have a great rest of your weekend. Make sure to practice these skills, okay? Practice makes perfect. It's really important. The video will be available on the channel in one hour. You can come back, review it. Again, students, don't forget, spend a couple dollars, save a lot. Join our premium package, G-I-E-L-T-S-Help.com for the general version of the test, uh, AEHelp.com or AcademicEnglishHelp.com for the academic version of the test. Both of those websites have six original practice tests, a fully interactive 60-hour course, lots and lots of high-definition video lessons for you over 100 hours. Uh, and uh, all students who use our course for a month before their exam, they all say that they improved by at least one band score. So the proof is in the pudding. Um, all right, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend, as I said. Much love to all of you. You're brilliant people. Keep up the good work. Reach for your dreams. Don't let anything get in your way. If it does, step over it. Bye for now.